Now, by the time the clocks strike five o'clock in the evening, most museums in Wiltshire are shutting up shop, ushering vicious visitors out and uh, closing the doors behind them. Uh, but this week, you might just find they've chosen to stay open a little later than usual to offer you a different experience after hours. It's all part of a na nationwide festival, which is called uh, Museums at Night. It starts today, it runs until Saturday, and Rosie Clark joins us from our studio in Brighton to tell us more. Hello, Rosie. Hello, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Why do you think it feels different being in a museum after hours when it would usually be shut? Oh, I think it's much more atmospheric, certainly as the sunset is falling and if you're going around by torchlight or if you're seeing something different that wouldn't normally be on display. Also, everyone's more relaxed after hours, aren't they? It can be difficult to get to museums if you're working, you know, 9 to 5.30 and you're busy at weekends. So having after hours events is terrific. And you're encouraging museums around the country as well to do something a bit different, to offer a new experience. So it's not just a case of, oh, they happen to be open on a Thursday night when normally they'd be shut. You're encouraging them to try something a bit outside the box? Uh, yes, yeah, and I've actually got a few highlights from the Wiltshire area which I can I can share with you. So at Swindon Museum and Art Gallery, they've got a couple of um, special storytelling events. There's magic carpet storytelling for four to seven-year-olds on the 15th. That's from 6pm. Then following that, it's bone-chomping beasts and magical monsters for sharp fangs, traps of trickery and passing crocodiles. Ooh. So that would be good fun. Um, on the same night, on the 15th, um, over in Devizes at Wiltshire Museum, they're doing a special Saxon night. Expect cave art, hunting dances, torchlit tours, stories from Beowulf actually in Old English. That will be intriguing. And then there's a couple of events for grown-ups as well um, on the Friday too. Over in Salisbury, um, there's a special Bringing Sherlock Holmes to Life performance in Salisbury Museum. So in the old chapel, that really atmospheric space, it's one actor and he's playing all the characters with super quick costume changes. Then if you're into um, a bit more serious history, uh, there's a great expert on the Magna Carta. It's giving a talk about its connection to Salisbury and that's in Salisbury Cathedral from 7.30. And finally, there's a couple of really interesting ones on the Saturday night. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Sevington Victorian School building. Yes, yeah. Yes, so atmospheric. Well, they're doing a special candlelit dinner in the old schoolroom. They're lighting up up the oil lamps and telling ghost stories around the fire and meanwhile over in Chippenham Museum they're doing unbelievable truth tours about tall tales from Chippenham's history and then they're hosting the first ever silent disco in the medieval yeld hall. We're going to be hearing more about that later and in fact the actor who plays Sherlock Holmes is uh, going to be on our programme tomorrow so we're hearing more about that as well. Oh, how very exciting. excited <laughs> about um, museums at night and, and, and what can be offered. What about elsewhere around the country are there any highlights that stick out for you that you think gosh this is quite crazy what they're doing or exciting that they're doing it in anywhere around the UK. Oh, yeah, well, to be honest, there's about 650 events oh, all over many. the UK, <laughs> yes, and around 500 venues, so we're really excited by, by the response. Um, but no, I think sleepovers are always a highlight. They are always something that, if you go to a museum sleepover, you'll remember that for the rest of your life. Um, meanwhile, there's, uh, there's things like over in the Horniman Museum in South London. Um, they've got an event all about nature, and they're having these graffiti artists who will be creating a massive um, mural, but they won't reveal their faces because they're doing it all anonymously. <laughs> oh, very Banksy, <laughs> I, I see. I know, lots of fun, yeah. And um, it was a real success, success this event last year, wasn't it? The festival, you know, really took off and went well. Yes, definitely. Well, this is in its seventh year now, um, and last year there were 180,000 visits made to museums after hours during the festival, so this is absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's really popular. People love the chance to get into museums after hours. And excitingly, for the first time this year, we're coming back again in October. We're having a second festival on the 30th and 31st to tie in with Halloween and half term. Yes, and so, nice and spooky around that time as well. You do get those darker nights drawing in earlier, don't you? So you can sort of yeah. make the most of that atmosphere to... Definitely, no. So that, that will be fantastic. Good. Well, the Museums at Night website, museumsatnight.org.uk, if you want to have a look at what's going on around the country and find events in the local area as well, a, a good flavour and some of the highlights of what's happening here in Wiltshire. Rosie Clark, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.